podcast and this is our series of 24 questions in 2024. I'm Alex Gill and I'm an LLB student at Bristol campus and I'm one of the hosts for this new podcast series uh, talking with various guests like Amanda from across the university and asking them 24 questions to find a bit more about them, about their roles and any other interesting insights. So as you heard today we're joined by Amanda Karachi, she is our head of pro bono here at the university and so Welcome, Amanda. Hi to the Thank podcast. Thank you very much. Hi. Hi, Alex. So to start things off, Amanda, could you perhaps tell our listeners in 60 seconds or so a little bit about yourself and your role at the university here? Yeah, OK. Um, so my background is I'm a criminal defence lawyer. So I was a criminal defence lawyer, started my training contract in Liverpool and moved down to the Bristol area. And I was um, a criminal defence lawyer for about 22 years working in the, the courts here before I moved fully full time over to the university. Thank you very much. Is that um, 60 seconds? You... That's about 60 seconds. Isn't it? <laughs> I was trying to squeeze that in then. <laughs> that's fine. That's fine. And then... Um, what did you um what did you most enjoy about the um about your job as well um previously criminal defense i i love the thrill of the court i'm a, i'm a bit of a court junkie i i love the adrenaline of the courts and the theater of the courts um human nature and that kind of I, i'm hoping that that is um kind of transferred as well to to students what i love about the job i do at the minute is it's just seeing the next generation of lawyers coming through, trying to support them, trying to inspire them, um, you know, making sure they go on the right journey. Um, I, I just love that interaction with students. Yeah. So yeah. It, it's, a, it's a daily joy to be to be kind of working in this job. Oh, and then I guess kind of looking forward, um, you know, in terms of helping the students in the next generation, um yeah. would you probably say that the pro bono work and obviously that's what you advocate yeah. the most for yeah. you know that's the most important thing so could you just explain what pro bono is and how that works yeah so the idea of pro bono it's, it's a really lovely concept really it's it's kind of I always kind of think of it as a triangle in relation to the the aim of it is to give free legal advice and assistance to members of the public so it's not that far you know from legal aid work it's social welfare it's in the main it's helping people who are just desperate for some legal advice and assistance you know unmet need that that couldn't be achieved otherwise so it's, it's helping that who does that it's the students it's you guys who are coming into our legal advice clinics that we run I mean we try and mirror law firms really in what we we do we offer you know helping members of the public and students are engaging in that so it's giving you you know amongst your studies it's giving you that taste of what it's like to be a lawyer and and seeing how what you're learning is applied in practice and um, and also it's you know helping you network meet meet solicitors understand the kind of context of, of what you're going into so it, it's a win-win for everyone and you know and students are engaging as well they're meeting prospective employers so it just is a really lovely um, kind of thing for students to engage in, to to hopefully, you know, realise our ambitions, understand the context of what they're learning, um, network in the legal community that they're a part of. And, you know, the one thing I really want students to take away with them is, you know, no matter what field they're going into, it's that ethos of helping people, making a difference. And, you know, even students that go into corporate um, law in the future and corporate careers or, or, you know, other careers beyond law, that, you know, every company has a charity of the year. Every company, you know, has a kind of a CSR policy. It's it's just a lovely ethos that I'm making a difference to someone's life. Today, I changed a life, you know, and that's why many of us wanted to do law, really. We wanted to make a difference. So that's, that's what pro bono is. And then kind of picking up where you went off there. So would you say, um, you know, students obviously should consider doing pro bono, pro bono work, but it's not just to help their future career, but it's also to help the kind of the moral aspect of, of what we all want to do entering law is kind of giving back to, to people. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, everybody will know about the legal aid cuts that came in, you know, a decade ago now. Uh, you know, legal aid was decimated across the country. So many people, you know, Parents wanting contact with their children, um, 
immigration advice, employment law advice, um, people just wanting to separate and stay in a house, um, legal aid, you know, any help and assistance disappeared for that and and so there's there's so many people and, and you know alongside that advice agencies are disappearing as well and um, citizens advice are closing down law centers are closing down so there's huge waves of people within the community that just don't have the money to pay for legal advice that are desperate for some guidance and i think it's great you know there is a role here we're not replacing legal aid but there is a real role here for law students to make a difference to people's lives um, you know, we train you, we support you in pro bono, um, and you know you can you can be present in clinics, going out to the community. I know, Alex, you know you've been into into a school to teach um, students about citizenship and the law. Yeah. Um, there's so many varieties of pro bono schemes that students can engage in, um, but the idea, you know, the nub of them all is you're really making a difference to people in the community, you're really helping empower them to understand something that's so complex um, for the layperson to understand about, you know, what do I need to do if I need to, to see my child? How, how do I start this journey? What do I do? What what do, does all this terminology mean? Um, you know, young people in schools understanding the law of consent, you know, if they, if they stray on the wrong side of that, the, the impact for them could be devastating. So, you know, law students, you guys can make a real difference to people. And I think students love that, you know, the majority, you know, come to learn about the law it's fascinating it's responding to society but it's really helping make a difference to people's lives yeah i was gonna say just the kind of next follow-up for the um pro bono work is kind of you've listed some of the um kind of skills that people develop doing it but i wondered if you want to just give a specific example of one area of like pro bono work you could do and kind of the skills you as a student would gain from it yeah, I mean, every every opportunity we design, each pro bono coordinator designs as a team, we design these schemes to hopefully, you know, look at what need there is in the community um, to, to ensure that they are, you know, challenging for you, but not like you're being sent out feeling like lambs to the slaughter, I hope. Um, but, <laughs> but also, and we support you, but also to, you know, a wealth of skills, transferable skills. So even students that don't want to go into being lawyers, um, you come away with fantastic transferable skills, presentation skills, communication skills, um, understanding professional ethics, how to be professional. I mean, de- you know, it, it's lip service saying all that without giving you some context. So just as an example, we um, do, um, y- you know, Alex, you go, go into schools and we do workshops and presentations. And when yeah. you're designing these presentations, you have to think about your audience. Um, so that's client care, you know, what age, what do they want to know? What's, you know, is English their first language? Um, what do we need to think about to make it interactive? That's developing your presentation skills, your communication skills, your legal research skills. Um, and also a lot of these, um, a lot of the kind of companies and law firms now are doing virtual interviews and virtual presentations as well. So it's also giving you really practical experience about how to effectively present to people, how to communicate through a virtual area, because that's where a lot of interviews are, are now going away from that kind of face-to-face interview situation. So hopefully there's lots of transferable skills there. We also do opportunities with Amnesty International where students, I always kind of use this example, just say how to, to show what transferable skills can be gained from opportunity. With Amnesty International, we highlight to you a case study. So recently we did one um, focusing on somebody who was on death row in Alabama, who's facing execution for a crime they say they didn't commit. And students, um, you know, will, will learn about the fact that Amnesty International feel there's been a human rights violation there. And we teach students about the um, international human rights laws. We, we give them an overview of the domestic human rights laws and laws of states um, in relation that are relevant to that particular case. And then students go away it's an interesting case. They do legal research and then they draft a letter um, to a nominated person that is persuasive, professional, objective, you know, removing politics, removing emotion, um, just highlighting what legal research they've done, what advice they would give, what they want to change. And that's effectively what you do as a lawyer. You, 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 you hear about your client's case, you conduct legal research and then you write to the client telling them objectively, professionally, unemotively, 
what they should do next and, and support that advice with legal research. And so a really interesting case study actually is mirroring what somebody does in practice. So these opportunities are designed to give you a wealth of transferable skills so students can go into interviews to say, you know, yes, I have these skills, but, you know, here is a kind of a contextual example of where I've demonstrated those skills. You know, hire me, I'm a safe pair of hands, I know what I'm doing. But also it shows that students can go the extra mile. You know, you're doing more than just what you have to do at the university. You've, you've got time management skills, you've got the energy to engage in extracurricular um, work. And, you know, the feedback from a lot of law firms is that, I was speaking to some pro bono coordinators today about it, you know, firms are saying, you know, there's three things that we look for in a student. One is the student itself, um, two is the grades, but three is what else are they doing? What else they're doing beyond their studies? So it's really important for, for all students as well to engage in some pro bono work, get some practical experience. Exactly. That was a bit of a long answer to your question, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. And then, um, obviously, I, you know, you know, and I know that I've done a bit of pro bono myself, and I yeah. totally agree. The the skills it gives you, the transferable um, of just learning how to present yourself or deal with day to day issues, I think it's just really how good for students. It? To, I think. To do. What, yeah, what people probably listening to don't know. You went out to a, a, a girls' school, didn't you? And you delivered a presentation yeah. to hundreds of, of 14 year old girls, which is a kind of a challenging audience to say the least. How did you find it? Did you enjoy the day? Um, yeah, yeah, I did enjoy the day. It was really good. As you said, it was, a, it was a challenging experience. But I think, you know, once you got started and once you got into the into the groove of things, it was um, yeah. it was just really yeah. enjoyable, actually. You know, get, as you say, giving back to the um to the students and just kind of enabling that community kind of making the law accessible which is what yeah. the whole for me yeah. the whole nice point point about pro bono is is um was given back so yeah i really enjoyed it so yeah it's, i think pro bono is that sort of it's a mix between a challenge and and the and the reward you get back from doing it so yeah yeah um yeah. but to, to link on to that how can um how can students get started with the pro bono work themselves yeah, so every every campus has a pro bono coordinator. Um, so you can just email your pro bono team. Um, the majority online campus will obviously have a virtual pro bono coordinator, but every other um, pro bono department is under employability. Um, we all have an office on campus, so we're there. We we're contactable by email. And we, we can show you how to sign up. Students can sign up at any time of year. Um, for pro bono so you know, you know sometimes I know Alex you've just had exams it's a busy period for you in, in January you know you won't be the only one that's that January is a busy time because there's application deadlines um, as well so you know yeah. if any students still are interested in it or you know when they join the university want to know about it and you know have maybe missed the email saying you know here's here's an overview of what we do um, just come and talk to us. You know, we we love the joy for us. I said at the beginning, the joy for us is speaking to you, getting to know you. So, you know, for you, Alex, that's an example. I use you as an example. You know, we saw you um, at the beginning of term. We got to know you. Yeah. Kind of, and the more we get to know you as well, you know, we can say to you, you know, hi, Alex, have you thought about this firm? You know, we really think we'd be really suited to this. Or maybe you haven't got this experience on your CV. Come and, you know, maybe have a think about this event or this scheme. Um, and also just to know, you know, it's just lovely to have that communication with you really and that ongoing discourse to see how you're doing how we can support you best um yeah so, yeah it's more of a, a personable experience it's lovely, doesn't isn't it? it yeah it's really lovely to kind of get to know you and I hope you feel like you can drop into the office anytime and ask us any questions um but yeah students shouldn't feel like they can't contact us you know students can sign up we have a, a portal employability portal where all our opportunities are posted um, you know, students should probably be already on that to book careers appointments. But, you know, if any student hasn't been on it yet or is unsure about how to access it, just email, you know, whatever the campus is, you know, so for you, you'd email Bristol Pro Bono um, at law.atheuk um, or just drop into the office, see your pro bono coordinators. You know, we'd, we'd love we'd love to see as many as many as possible um of, of students coming through our doors that's what we miss that's where we get our kind of joy from in our days is seeing you so please don't feel anyone listening to this that um you know you can't just come and see us drop in send us an email we'd be delighted to see everybody exactly and as you said i've i've done it myself and it's it's so easy and once you've um built that connection with the team it's just um 
yeah, it's really easy to get involved with everything. So I'd absolutely recommend going along and seeing your uh, careers team or pro bono coordinator at your campus. Yeah. Um, and then I guess a bit of an open ended question. But do you think if someone's interested in doing pro bono, should they focus it on the area of law they want to go into or should they pick an area they're unsure of to kind of get a taste of the work yeah, um, I, that they might I receive? Both actually have benefits. I think, you know, as example, if there are any students wanting to do family law, um, family law is a kind of closed court, closed appointments generally just because of the nature of the work. So sometimes, you know, pro bono can be the only way really students can get any practical experience of family law. You know, you can't, if you want to do crime, you can always drop in any time at the Crown Court or you can listen to the kind of Supreme Court cases online. Um, family law is harder to do that. So, it, you know, for, for anyone wanting to go into that area, it's it's quite good to gain experience of the area you want to go into. Um, I think for others, though, it, it does give you a taste of, you know, maybe things that you think, actually, I hadn't really thought about that. Um, even for students just starting with us, you know, I always say the, one of the first things everybody should do is go on a court visit. Because I think if you, you know, you get that thrill of a court, that tribunal, you enjoy the theatre of the court, um, you know, that's something that's really informative of, you know, I, I don't want to be based in office. Some students come along and think, actually, you know court work tribunal work isn't for me um and so it does inform you of, of what you want to do we we do in our pro bono schemes we do teach you um some of the law in relation to that area just so you can have context but what we're not doing is is making you you know if you do an opportunity in relation to family law as an example we're not training you mm -hmm. to be a family lawyer. It doesn't matter what area of the law you're doing. It's like you said before, it's the skills that you're gaining that are important rather mm -hmm. than particularly the area of the law. But yeah, you will learn something about law in that area. And also it just gives you the taste. You know, some students say, you know, gosh, I love that human rights law experience. I hadn't thought about doing that, but actually maybe I will now. Or some students kind of might say, you know, I loved, I love going along to, we take students to the police misconduct tribunals. Um, yeah, I really enjoyed that tribunal hearing that that setting. You know, I'd love to do that. I don't want to be in an office all day. So, you know, it's it just informs you. The more you do with it, the more informed you are when you have to start making decisions. Yeah, and I think we might have we may have touched on this already, but um, the kind of typical day of pro bono work changes on the sort of activity or experience you're you're doing. But I guess roughly, would you like to outline what a a typical day of pro bono work could look like for a student? Yeah, hugely varied. I mean, what we don't do is make it so onerous that it's going to impact your studies at all. So we're very careful to ensure that, you know, the, the time run into it, the the expectation upon you isn't too onerous. Um, so it, it does it does vary hugely in relation to um, what you do on a day to day basis. And I think one of the joys of the University of Law with the pro bono as well is lots of lots of universities have law clinics but a lot of them are very static they're a clinic that is set up in but covering various areas of the law um it runs on a particular day to members of the public um we don't do that we we have flexible opportunities and the joy of that is that we can respond to need so our our clinics we don't have a set static law clinic per se we have a whole range of clinics running and opportunities running. And the joy of that is that we can respond. So if we, for example, in the pandemic, um, we were able to set up our small business advice line scheme for, we recognised that a lot of people were making hobbies into jobs and they were doing startups, you know, they couldn't go into work anymore, they'd be made redundant. So somebody who said, hey, I love making, I don't know, cakes and now everybody wants cake deliveries at home. I'm going to set up a cake startup business. We were able to say, actually, there's, there's tens of people out there who are starting up as little entrepreneurs. Why don't we set up a small business advice line to help those people? So our, our days aren't set days like um, some university pro bono clinics are. We're, we're really flexible. And so, but I think that helps you guys as well, because you don't have to, you know, yeah. everybody can do it. They, the schemes run throughout the week on different days, on evenings. Um, so it does allow everybody to engage as well for different times. And, you know, we have clinics running through the day. We have 
suite of opportunities where you do those online presentations running throughout the term. Um, but yeah, there, there is no one set day, but I think the theme of it is, you know, supporting students, getting the skills on the CV and helping people in the community get the advice they need. They're the, they're the key themes that run through every day. Yeah, and that's, that's a nice way of putting it as well. And kind of um, to follow on from that is kind of, I totally agree with the um, time commitment. It's, it's, it's up to you how much time you can either put in yeah. or, or want to put in. Um, and we obviously give quite a big um, kind of a, I guess, a runway for people to know what they've got to do and when they've got to do it. So for when I went to that school, I had about a month to make the presentations, didn't I? So I, I guess the yeah. time commitment's up to the student themselves, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. And you know, we do the, the clinics that we run. So we have clinics in wills and trusts and small business and family law. You know, students can say, well, actually, my time is so limited. I mean, we, we wholly appreciate that so many students now are having to work. Um, you know, that times are hard. Lots of students have to work. So they have other commitments, maybe caring responsibilities, maybe commuting responsibilities. And so if student just says, you know, this month I only have a couple of hours to give, that's fine. We have schemes for you. you know, don't do any prep work, drop in and be an observer at one of the clinics where our lawyers are giving advice to members of the public. You know, see the law in action, listen, learn, um, take away some, some kind of like headline learning from it and some skills for your CV. Um, but other students might say, well, I have more time. We'll say, great, you know, do the clinic again then a number of times or, you know, be the, 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 the student that calls the client and triages them, um, practicing your client care, your communication, you know, prepping questions for the client. So, yeah, whatever time commitment the student has, we've got something for them to do. Um, you know, there's even just even if you've just got the whole academic year, two hours, there is something that we can give you to put on your CV and gain some valuable skills, you know, little Little input, lot of output. Yeah, exactly. And I guess um, just to kind of captivate the people listening, um, what, do you want to just do a roll call of different organisations and companies that we work with to help put these um, opportunities together? Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna you put me on the spot there and try to think of them all. Um, I know. <laughs> right. So um, we work with organisations, systems advice, schools consent project. Um, we work with law firms such as um, Freaks, Knights, and um, Womble Bond Dickinson, Owen Mitchell, um, Shoesmiths nationally. So some really great law firms uh, are supporting. Um, we work with law centres, local law centres, work with the courts and tribunals. Um, we work with organisations that in-house like Disney support our um, small business advice clinic and they're, they're fantastic they came on the call with all their kind of sign off signatures have the little mickey mouse ears above that you know, everyone thinks oh, i want to work with disney um but you know just great organizations and companies that are supporting and also you know that their lawyers are really generous at giving up their time and you know you can stay on the call afterwards with somebody from disney and say what's it like to work as an in-house lawyer um you know can you tell me about your pathway into that organization um, same, you know, the courts as well. People, people are very generous in the legal community with their time. Um, we work with lots of kind of barristers, um, individual assistants as well. And they do, you know, you come on the law clinic when they're giving the advice and assistance to the client. And as well as asking them about, you know, why did you give that advice to the client? Why do you think this is that? You know, I would have done X. Why did you do Y? Um, as well as kind of specific questions in relation to um, the advice given and the client work. Also, there's that opportunity to say to the, to the lawyer, you know, what's it like to work for a company in family law? You know, how do you leave what you see in a day at home, at, at, you know, at work at five o'clock and go home? And how do you balance that? So there's, there's a really great opportunity as well to, to ask some of those questions that you don't have opportunities to ask otherwise. But yeah, a whole kind of span of organisations, companies, charities, that we work with as well which are great you know to put on your cv you know if you put on your cv that you've worked with the school's consent project or shoe smiths you know that they're really reputable organizations that you've got on your cv that you can say you know i was pro professional ambassador for the university of law um and and you know they are reputable and they give a lot back as well to the students that engage with them that is 
very impressive roll call, especially off the top of your head. Um, <laughs> I'll think of loads more now. Every time as I go, I think, oh, I should mention that one. <laughs> yeah, apologies uh, um, to anybody I missed that. I was, um, yeah. <laughs> so for any, um, so any students that are listening to this and going, I want to get involved in pro bono work. What would you give them? Any couple of words of advice for? Um, for someone just interested in getting involved yeah just do it yeah um you know and even if you're not sure come and talk to us um you know hopefully you'll come and see us and we will ignite that flame and i'm really encouraged I, I, you know some students may lack confidence saying oh, i haven't done any legal clinic work before like you know I, I'm, I'm a transferring student i'm a mature student i'm a conversion student um i'm a visa student you know but everyone can be engaged you know these pro bono is designed to to make sure it's inclusive for everybody whatever your you know whatever your hurdles may be and so um so yeah just come along chat to us like i said you know call in and see your pro bono coordinator on campus um email pro bono hyphen whatever your campus is you know pro bono hyphen newcastle uh, pro bono hyphen leads at law and just you know ask any questions and I'm sure once we speak to you understand you know what your legal journey you're hoping for is we can really support you with that getting some skills on your CV and I think you know the words of reassurance I hope you know we're not we're not scary we're not dragons um <laughs> if you if you start and you think do you know what I haven't got the time to do this anymore or oh gosh I've got a really heavy workshop um just let us know you know that's that's fine you're not yeah. you're not committed you're not contracted to it um if you know if you start and find that you just you just haven't got the time to do it anymore that's fine you will have gained something from that whilst you can commit so yeah just, you know but I'm sure students that do engage um really enjoy the the engagement with pro bono um you know it brings it brings alive what you're doing it brings to life what you're reading, what you're prepping for in your workshop. I, mean, I teach on the LLB. I know how hard your consolidation, your preparation is. Um, <laughs> you know, this this just brings it. What you're reading and you're reading this alive, and you can you know make you can make a difference to somebody's life before you even qualified. It's it's a great yeah. feeling, um, as well as you know that nitty gritty skills on your CV that will be invaluable, and and just that experience. I think. Like you know, the, the confidence that you get from thinking when you start your your qualified work experience or those that got training contracts going into training contracts still, um, you know, and somebody says, "Oh, can you draft a witness statement?" That's why I had to do on my first day. Someone said, "Draft a witness statement for me," and I thought, "I don't know how a witness statement looks like." And to have had that experience of understanding it, having done it, will give you that confidence just to hit the ground running. So it's it's not just about getting skills for your CV. It's knowing having that confidence to go into an interview and say yeah I do know what I'm doing and then when you start your journey knowing what you're doing and and feeling confident in your your capabilities as well and you know you'll you'll get that you'll get that feedback to to help you reflect on your learning and, and to develop yourself it's a win-win Alex well, you know I was gonna I say it's a win-win win. I just love it exactly <laughs> yeah just just do it that's that's the word just, it? just do, do it. it just do it and if you know if you start you can always change your mind Exactly. And then I guess some um, linking to that quite well. Um, do you think there's one standout or like proudest achievement you've done yourself in, in the pro bono work that's, I don't know, had the biggest impact on a community or or the, the best self-achievement for yourself whilst doing uh, it? I'm trying to think now. Um, I, 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 <laughs> I don't know, on the, the spot again. No, I, yeah. one of the things I did which started me on pro bono is... Um, number of years ago I was contact when I was um in practice I was contacted by the local police to go into every school in um the Bristol area to deliver sessions to children on knife crime and the dangers of knife crime and to understand the implications of carrying knife. a lot of it was carrying knives for self-defense um and actually it was really fabulous experience to go to all the schools to meet those young people and um you know to be part of a, of a, a project run by many organizations the police um different organizations going into schools to support those young people understanding the dangers that you know we've all been 13 14 don't we you know you don't you don't see dangers um, and i just hope that you know someone there was some disclosures 
about people who said, you know, I'm really scared about this happening to me, that happening to me. I know X person carries a knife, et cetera, et cetera. But I just hope that by doing that, um, I did it for about three years. Um, I I made a difference to one person that I spoke to and their life going forward to understand, you know, personal choices, good choices going forward. So that, that was something I got really engaged with and got got a lot out of and that kind of cemented my desire to do pro bono work hopefully forevermore i think that's a powerful um story message to kind of convey the different scales of the different work of pro bono it might just be visiting a court or it could lead to a lot more of kind of um being that link between the community and of local authorities and everything as well yeah 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 and i mean you um, you, you do get you do you know you will you will see clients in in the clinics who you know you will make a really difference to their to their lives. I mean, one of our one of our elementary students at Bristol, he engaged in a welfare benefit tribunal scheme, and he um, on his first ever case he was terrified. He was like we were, we were supporting him through it, but he got he was the advocate for a welfare benefit tribunal for somebody who'd had their benefits refused, and they were desperate and. He contacted me afterwards to say, I won that case. I won that case. I got £5,000 for them in um, reclaimed benefit. And that wow. meant that that family weren't evicted from their home and could, you know, could buy food for their, their family forevermore. And, you know, I, I, I'm still in contact with him a number of years later. And he said, you know, that was that was a life changing moment for him when he achieved that. And, you know, something he can be can be proud of forevermore. Um, yeah, and that's that's the kind of thing you do with with pro bono. You do you, you change people's lives. Yeah, totally agree. And um, I guess the last couple of these are a bit more a bit more general because I know you're okay. the head of pro. I know you're the head of pro bono, but you also were part of the employability team and still are. Yeah. Um, so, what are the other services the employability team offer to support students with? Yeah, so we we fall under employability because we we are really looking at developing you as a, a student, making you a you know a great all rounder student. Um, we understand what you know. We, we have very strong links with um, local with local law firms. Every pro bono coordinator has been or still is a practicing solicitor with contacts in the community. Um, so we fall within employability for that reason and. We have very close working relationships with uh, the other half of the employability team, which are careers. So the employability team, there's one at every campus, are made up of pro bono and careers. And we liaise together to look at how can we best support you, not just getting a job in the future or getting on the right career. It's the right career path for you, the right job for you, the the, the job where you're going to succeed, where you're going to thrive. That's what we want you to do. We want every student leaving us to thrive in their career. And that is, you know, by careers give, giving you the, the support to, to know where to apply to, how to apply, how to shine, to present yourself to your best abilities in an interview, um, to stand out what, you know, abilities you have on your CV, um, how best to answer questions. Not these are just simple tweaks. You know, you have all the tools. It's just knowing what the law firms are looking for, how to present. Um, and so the careers give us support with that. We, we run tens and tens each year of of workshops and talks and employer talks. And obviously, you know, the students will often know the the, the law fairs that run. Um, so we, we, you know, we try and give you every tool you need to have a really successful career. And between us, we, we work closely with our careers colleagues. So for example, Alex, if you came into office, which you did, you know, my careers yeah. partner and I will talk about, you know, with, with obviously with your blessing, um, you know, what do we think would be best for Alex to engage in? You know, what maybe he needs to tweak with his CV? Um, and yeah. we, we liaise together and try and kind of support you in knowing what's out there, um, you know, you you have, have a wealth of talents, Alex. So it's you know understanding how best we can make them shine to their best, um, and you know make you attractive to the employers, and more so than you already will be. And um, looking a bit also, you know, helping you. Know, you and I have talked about you know law firms that I think would be a good fit for you, and yeah. knowing your personality, yeah, what you want to do, um, and liaising with careers about that as well. So 
you know, it's a, it's a, it's a kind of all round support um, group that we're in as well. And also we are the, generally on campus. We're the only office generally, which is an open door office. You know, obviously student information yeah. can't be accessed by students. Um, you know, tutor rooms often can't be accessed by students because of all the private information behind that. The employability suite is a suite where we say, come in, see us, sit down. You know, if you've got 10 minutes before your class, instead of just hanging around the cafe, come and see us, sit down. You know, we'll, we'll have a chat to you while you wait. And um, we're an open office, we're an open door. We love to see students come in through that through that door into the employability office, just, just for a general chat. No question is too silly, as they say. Exactly. And I think that's that's where I started off, wasn't it? I did um it was just a general chat with you to work out um kind of careers and, and how we get into the law and, and and where to go with CVs and yeah, stuff. Yeah, just you know, just basic steps and a lot of students um, you know, aren't aware because where where do you find it that you know the, the, the journey into law is quite a staged one at times, that you know, you have to start getting opportunities on your CV really in your first year to apply for vacation schemes in your second year to then apply for your what will be qualified work experience in your final year um, for those PGL students you know understanding you know transferring and converting you know what what sections of the law there are what what are the practicalities of day-to-day lawyer you know for me I would have loved to have known what the practicalities of being a criminal lawyer, you know, and I know about going to court, but what I didn't know about was the kind of the night shifts, the the ethics behind it, um, the level of responsibility yeah. that you'd have, the interaction, you know, how varied and fabulous the day can be. So, you know, come and talk to us about different sectors of the law, you know, what's the practical practical aspects of that, what firms are hiring, what areas of the law are growing, what's the future in relation to the legal workplace, in relation to AI, hybrid working, we we have the answers to that. And also, lots of um, students will have questions in relation to qualified work experience. You know, has work experience I've done, does that count as qualified work experience? Um, Is what I'm doing now counting as qualified work experience? And I think for each student, there is no general answer to that. There is kind of generic advice, but each student's circumstance of what they'll have done will be unique to them. And that needs an individual conversation and so you know we're really encouraging students as well to come and see us to have those individual conversations about qualified work experience as well does it count what I'm doing account what I want to do will that count yeah I guess um leading on from that is there is there like um a top three or or five sort of um tips you would have for kind of creating or or kind of making a good CV for students um I think looking at what skills that aren't currently present on your CV. Um, so, you know, do you have those I mean, interview questions and CVs are still haven't really changed that much in the kind of 40 years or so <laughs> since I did mine. Um, so it's looking at, you know, have you got communication skills, client care skills, um, you know, professional skills, um, organisation skills, all those things have to be not blatantly, you know, I have good communication skills, but can you kind of weave those skills through your CV? Um, so you need to have a look at what skills am I lacking? And also just like we were talking before, weren't we, about, you know, that confidence of going into the workplace, I think it's beyond the CV as well. It's it's what you need to feel that on day one, you can hit the ground running. So the university, yeah. you know, pro bono is a really safe space to make mistakes. Um, as well and learn and grow it's the place to do it and so you know if you if you made a little boo-boo in relation to some client care and this is this is the place to do it because you know you give the feedback the reflection you learn there's no implications for it so as you know it's it's beyond just that nitty-gritty of the cv it's 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 getting that experience to feel confident going into your career and looking at the skills for both the cv and the career and then you know, once you've got those skills, see the careers manager who can kind of polish that CV beautifully for you and liaise with you and do those mock interviews to, you know, to really draw out great answers to questions from you and give you that feedback you need to show you how you can, you know, you're not selling yourself as much as you could be. I think students tend to undersell themselves these days. Um, it, it seems to be a trend that that yeah. people are kind of very hesitant to, to shout about that their abilities and what they've done um, or maybe don't know that actually what they have done is, is you know, brilliant and law firms really want to hear about this organizations really want to hear about this so um, yes so between pro bono and 
careers, we can really have a look at making your CV and your interview and you know careers future as best for you as we can. And we have lots of kind of online guides as well. We can hand out to you, send you, email you, etc. Yeah, I guess it's all about kids, like um, just someone helping you who knows the way to kind of allow you to establish your own your own path to your own future career, really, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And there might be, you know, there might be things you just haven't thought about um, as well that, you know, we can speak to you, like, you know, like with you, Alex, but, you know, we get to know you, um, you know, yeah. and maybe suggest, you know, have you thought about this, Alex, because you'll really enjoy this, but so have you thought about doing X or Y and, um you know you've done you've done loads Alex yeah. um with us which is which is great you know you've been to court you know you understand you know maybe you don't want to become a criminal lawyer but oh you know it's like I said before it's all informative um yeah yeah even yeah. if it even if it shows you why you don't want to do something it proves that you, you've narrowed down your options a bit more haven't you yeah absolutely I mean it's yeah. like you know what we always say about work experience it's as much about learning what's not for you as learning what is for you I mean we were laughing yeah. when we went out to the school that day and you come away from it exhausted and you think I could not be a teacher because I'm yeah, so exactly. tired um but you know it's 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 learning isn't it about you know, from, you know what what stimulates you what do you get what do you enjoy this is what do you want to do for the rest of your life in in relation to work what kind of what kind of career will excite you you know light that flame inspire you um which would be great um you know and I, I think you get some very objective advice as well from the department I mean, when I started people said you know don't be a legal aid lawyer um you know there's no future in it you'll be poor forever um but I've loved it you know I loved it I wish I'd had a career advisor or that taste of pro bono to just cement that design. You know, I knew I wanted to work with people. I wanted to help people, but I had nobody supporting me to know better how I do that, how I get into that area. Um, and you know, so I, I stumbled my way through. But it would have been great to have somebody to speak to about that um, at that time. Um, yeah. Yeah. And then um, I'm going to challenge you now. Um, Go on. Could you could you describe the university's employability services in three words? Oh, okay. Um, indispensable. Can I can I do yeah. that for a start? Um, yeah, yeah. I'm trying to think. Um, friendly, open door. Um, that I've gone yeah. well beyond my three words already, haven't I? <laughs> um, supportive. Yeah, yeah, I'd agree. They're, those really good ones. Those. Um, and then kind of to. To finish off, just to get you to know you personally a bit more, um, cool. we've got eight quick fire questions. Um, okay. That aimed to be about you know a couple of words sort of thing. Uh, you might have to explain one or two of them, but yeah, we'll uh, <laughs> we'll give it a go. <laughs> um, so first one, if you could change, if you could make one change in the world, what would it be? Um, to remove injustice. Okay, and then if you're having a dinner party or a tea round at your place. Did you name three guests? <laughs> who would I who would I like? Um I'm trying to think of one person that I really, really would like. Um I do you know, I really admire Jamie Oliver. Um so yeah. I, I love what he's doing for kind of like trying to make a difference in schools with school meals, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. And he would have the benefit of being able to cook as well. And I think he'd be a bit of a laugh. So what is your favorite movie? Um I love um It's a Wonderful Life. I watch it every Christmas, so probably that would be, it's a kind of a feel-good um, joy of life, people helping each other. Um, so, it, yeah, it ticks all my boxes. Bit, bit yeah. no nostalgic. <laughs> That's fine. Um, and then what would you say your favourite way to relax or switch off your brain would be? I, um, what do I do my free time to relax? I, I... I do a little bit of ballet. That's a bit um yeah. Cool. Um probably as well, just seeing friends, um, gin yeah. and tonic, just yeah, unwinding, relaxing, um, yeah, offloading. <laughs> offloading, exactly. Um if you were stranded on a desert island and could only take three items, what would those three items be? 
you know, I can answer this to one of them on this one because I've always, I'm going to listen to Desert Island Discs. I think, why does nobody take their bed with them? So, like, you know, sleep on there. So, I would definitely, one of them would be my bed. Um, yeah, that's a good one, actually. Another would be, and maybe I could use it as a raft afterwards if I get really, I'm, I'm not somebody who would thrive on a desert island because I, I love people. So, I'd be, I'd be awful yeah. probably after a few days of my own company. Um, but yeah, a bed. Um, I think definitely photos of my children. That would be the worst thing. I'd I'd really miss my kids. Um, and and I also I love drinking tea. So probably like a I don't know a solar powered kettle. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe something like that. Yeah. And, and a limited <laughs> supply of tea bags <laughs> and a water filter. I guess I need as well. <laughs> can yeah. i have all of those can i have all of those <laughs> yeah we'll, we'll give you those sounds good to me Thank um you. and then where is your i guess where is your favorite place to travel or would where would you like to travel either or i have just literally yesterday i just got back from south africa and i adored it so um yeah. africa at the minute i love i love the colors i love the it's just so it's so different. And um actually when I was out there, a little plug for while I was out there, um, I saw lots of organizations as well, you know, that really helping people, empowering people. Um, it's you know, it's it's a fabulous place, great community, blue blue skies, especially in this January, where it's great outside at the minute, you know, really blue skies. So yeah, <laughs> Africa at the minute is my my place to travel to, I love. And then who do you most admire? And why? This morning I was listening to a podcast with I don't know if you've ever, have you ever listened to the Rest is Politics. Yeah, I, don't I know have. If you've yeah. To that so I was listening this morning to a Rest is Politics podcast. I was admiring kind of like Rory Stewart, who's on there, who is just so measured and thoughtful and informative, and I think has a good heart. So he's he's probably my current person this morning who I admire most this morning for those reasons. Current most admired is him, and then. Um, what advice would you give an 18 year old Amanda? Oh, what advice I would think, you give to yourself? I think probably just to have more confidence in, in kind of what I want to do, um, to, to, you know, to be kind of like, to, to be true to myself, to, to, to know what I like and to just, and just to go for it, not to have any doubt about it. Um, you know, nothing's forever. I think, to understand that you know things change doors open doors close um things things will work out things will work out you know you find ways um i think there's a lot of pressure at the, at the minute for you know i've got an 18 year old who is you know going off to university who's like you know oh gosh if i you know if i go it's is this my rest of my life and just to kind of reassure him that Actually, you know, your your career path will change, doors will open. You know, you think you want to be, you know, you might want to go into and be a criminal lawyer, but actually, you know, the, the opportunities arise that you you know you will change, you will grow. Go with it. You know, say yes to say yes to all the right things. Don't say yes to everything. Say yes to all the right things. Don't be afraid. Yeah. Don't be afraid to give things a go. Um, you know, it, it, everything will work out, and actually. If, if you change or you've learned something from it thank you for joining us uh today amanda thank you alex uh, um and providing such great insights at all things pro bono um and it's really good insight to knowing more about you as a person and kind of your reasons for enjoying pro bono um to find out more about our pro bono opportunities at the university and support uh from the employability team then please visit our website law.ac.uk and also please do just uh, follow up and keep up to date with any um with the next episode um but yeah thanks for listening and goodbye